Mm. Right, morning everybody. Uh, 14 kilometers on the agenda today. Uh, not super excited about it. Really found the motivation this week tough. Probably put this off already twice. I uh, can't put it off any longer. I don't have any, any days left this week where I can do a run of this length. But I have a few tactics that I use to try and get through these, these phases where my motivation is low. I've been through this before. And in fact, maybe two years ago, I, I had a slump like this and I actually stopped running completely and to my shame, really just stopped exercising in, in, in general. So I'm, I'm not gonna let that happen again. Uh, <clears throat> I will talk about that in, in a video in a couple of weeks about the, the impact that had on my life. But for now, positive things, let's just stay focused on tips and tricks you can use to fend off the lack of motivation to keep yourself running and to keep yourself exercising for the long term. I'm going to head out in about 30 minutes, um, get the run done. I'll show you some of my, 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 my tactics while I'm there. And then when we get back, I'll discuss a few more. Other than that, let's head out. Okay, here I am. I've come out to Alton Water here in Suffolk. It's a reservoir here. There's a loop of around about 12 kilometers. I think the other loop is around about 16. I've, not, I've never done never done that before on my bike or in the car or anything um have actually run this route once before but i've i've, I've come here today to run a fresh route and that, that's my first tip for keeping your motivation high and keeping the running fresh you've got to run a different route for weeks and weeks and months and months all i did was leave my front door and turn left or turn right and i had kind of like two or three variations of a route and it's never that exciting. And when you're doing four or five runs a week, you're doing the same routes or the same two or three routes every time, it gets super boring. So now I've made a, res a resolution, at least once a week, I'm getting out somewhere new to run. If I have to drive out, that's fine. So I drove like, like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, no, not 20 minutes, like 15 minutes to get here this morning. And it's totally fine. It's a beautiful route. There's, it's no roads whatsoever. It's all around the reservoir paths plenty of tree coverage. Um, I know it's a little bit bumpy, so uh, I've never really uh, taken a, a chance to like check the elevation or anything, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, but this is this is the first recommendation. You've got to keep your, your roots fresh. You've got to run in new places. Right, before I go, I'm gonna take a quick look around, so I'll, I'll film some footage, and then I'm gonna head out on the run in about 25, 30 minutes. Let's get going. out gorgeous day a little warm for me but beautiful loads of tree cover gorgeous scenery no cars it's great I'm not going to talk too much to the camera during this run I'm just going to try and enjoy it but I will get some time lapse footage and weave it in in the post production magic okay here we go See what the final stint looks like. Wow, that was hot. That was hilly. But it was great. I had a really good time. Uh, I had to sit down now. <laughs> My legs are, legs are like jelly. I had a great time though. Um, Met a nice guy, I was running around, ended up running 5K with him at the end, which was really nice. Sort of mixed things up a little bit, which which was another nice addition to keeping myself motivated. Um, the fact that it was hilly brings me on to my second point for how I think you can keep motivated when you're running, which is to get on the hills. If you don't already run on the hills, you absolutely need to throw some hills into your training. Not only is it better for strength, is it better for stamina training, it really does help. It just opens up a whole world of new places you can go running if you don't already do it. So if you're running on the flat roads near your house all the time, it's just going to get boring. But if you want to get onto trails, if you want to get out into nature, then a lot of that means you're going to have to run on some hills, on some rolling terrain. So just you know, embrace that, get out there, get that extra training effect, but also just get out into nature and enjoy something new. I really enjoyed this route today. It was not fast. I didn't hit the time I was hoping to. I was maybe 15 kilometers per 15 seconds per kilometer slower than I wanted to be but 
and obviously Mata had a great time and, and, and the, tr the, the scenery was, was wonderful. I'm gonna head home now, I'm super sweaty and I just need to get a shower. But when I get home, I'm gonna talk you through my final three tips for how you can stay motivated when you're running. Let's do this. Okay, I'm back home and I am showered and I am clean and it is cool. I'm actually here in my uh, garage, which I've, I've converted into a, a home gym. I'm very, very thankful that I've been able to do this to talk about the next three tips, actually. Let's get started with tip number three. Tip number three is to get on or off the treadmill. If you're already the kind of runner who runs a lot on the treadmill, maybe you do all of your runs on the treadmill or you do more than half your runs on the treadmill, it definitely pays to get off the treadmill and get out on the road. When you're running on the treadmill, you're not actually exercising all the muscles, the flat profile means you're not exercising all the smaller stabilizing muscles, but also you're not out in the sun, you're not getting as much vitamin D, and you're generally just seeing the same thing over and over again. However, if you don't run the treadmill much, it does pay to occasionally run on the treadmill. If you can't face the weather outside, maybe it's too hot, maybe it's too, too, too wet, the treadmill is great. Also, if you can find a place to put your iPad or your tablet or your TV, then you can quite happily uh, watch Netflix or YouTube and, uh, and kind of while away the minutes and the hours rather than being bored senseless on the run. So the treadmill is great for that. And actually the treadmill, being on the treadmill leads me into my fourth tip, which is to add in some intervals. I know that when I'm struggling during the week, if I've done an easy run, a long run, maybe a tempo run, it's all a bit similar, it's all a bit samey and I get quite bored. So, throwing in some intervals or throwing in some other kind of like high intensity interval training is a great way to stay active, stay on the run, but add in some variety. If you're just starting out with intervals and if you're not running huge distances, maybe you're running like up to 10K, then 400 meter intervals are great. You can do you know, maybe five, maybe, maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven add a two minute rest in between. If you're doing more kind of like half marathon or marathon distance, then 800 meter intervals are great. You can build up to 10 of these. Uh, I'm currently doing six with a two minute rest in between. And you can kind of like play with the pace, but you definitely want to be running fast in all of these cases. You want to be running, running a lot faster than your actual race pace. And this speed work will, will not only keep you entertained and keep you running fresh, it will, it will help you run faster during your longer runs. If you want to do something completely different, if you want to just mix it up, then you can do skipping, you can do battle ropes, you can do burpees, you can do crossfit, you can do any kind of high intensity training. And there's nothing wrong with saying one week, hey, I'm so bored of this week, I'm going to do a circuits class at the gym, or I'm going to go to a crossfit class, or I'm going to get the skipping rope out and do 20 minutes of that, or my favorite when I'm traveling, I'm going to do seven minutes flat out burpees and see how I feel after that. So you've got loads of variety. Now that leads me on to my fifth tip, which is another gym tip, and I'm going to head over there straight away. So tip number five is to do some cross training. Now I don't just mean doing the occasional interval session, I mean to actually have a thing that you do beside running. So I have my, my walk bike and I really like to spend maybe 90 minutes, two hours every week on here. Uh, for me, it's great. It takes the load off my joints and it means I can, I can put my iPad on or watch the TV and just kind of chill out. Um, I did CrossFit in the past. I do a lot of weightlifting as well to really enjoy. Whatever it is that you do to kind of get you away from running but keep you active is great. And if you're having a bad week, or there's a day you don't want to run, you've got something you can sub in. So I always have a plan for my week where I want to run one day, do something else the next day for six days, and then maybe take a full day of rest. But if I'm not feeling it, maybe I'll do two days of weightlifting back to back, or maybe if I'm really feeling in the mood for running, I'll try and do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and front load a lot of my runs in the, at the start of the week, giving myself the opportunity later in the week to be a little bit lazy and do some lifting or do some cycling instead. Just by having something else, it gives you the opportunity to take a break from running without taking a break from exercise. And the one thing I know, and the one thing I've seen happen to me time and time again, is taking a break from running is not so bad. Taking a break from exercise in, in, in its entirety is a huge mistake. And it's very, very easy to fall out of the, the habit 
of exercising. So I always grade myself like, yes, I want to hit my run, which is great. But if I can't hit my run, I want to hit something so that I can maintain that habit. Um, those are really my tips. Now, I actually have one bonus tip. I'm going to throw that in as well. I'm going to head back over to the house and get out of this garage and I'll share with you my bonus tip. Let's go there right now. Right, back in the house. Um, so for the sixth bonus tip, I think it pays to put some thought into what you listen to, what you do while you're running. For the longest time, I used to listen to music, but I'd listen to the same two playlists from Apple Music every time and it got a bit boring. And then I decided, because you can't really listen to music for all the races you might want to do, to just try training without any music at all. So for the last maybe four or five weeks now, I've done every run with no music, no audio books, no podcasts, nothing, no headphones in at all. And it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed the time to just focus on my thoughts, maybe plan out some vlog content, think about work problems, think about future training ideas, just really kind of like have some time to think to myself. When that gets a bit boring, I've got a bunch of audio books queued up that I'll, that I'll try. And ideally where I want to get to is the point where in one run a week, I'll maybe listen to an audio book. Maybe on a speed session, I'll put some music on. Maybe on my easy runs, I just listen to nothing so that I'm training as well to, to work without headphones. But if you, all you ever do is listen to the same thing, or if you only ever listen to music, or you don't listen to music, I definitely recommend trying something new. And it can be quite an interesting way to motivate yourself to get out to run. If you're listening to a cool audiobook or a cool podcast, that can be the time that you put aside to do that particular pursuit. It's the same reason if you're on the treadmill or on your exercise bike, throw on YouTube and watch some, uh, some tutorials. I'm watching a whole bunch of Photoshop tutorials at the moment while I'm on my exercise bike and it's fantastic. In fact, I'll link that uh, below so you can see which tutorials I'm watching. Other than that, I wanna thank you all for watching again. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really does help to see what content people like. If you have any ideas for fur further content, throw a comment below gear reviews, training ideas, things you'd like to see me do. Obviously, I won't do everything you suggest, but if it's something I can do, I'll do it. And other than that, I'll see you in the next vlog. Thanks very much.